Aloha ukulele class. This is lesson three. Today we're going to learn about chords, how to read the uh, chord diagrams, and we're going to talk a lot more today about rhythms and rhythm practice. Um, so uh, the documents you should have out for today, and I recommend that you print them all out and put them in a binder so that you have everything in one place and you can flip through the pages. Um, music is not so great to have to scroll around on the screen while you're trying to play it, so you kind of want everything out uh, right in front of you so that you can view like the entire page. And then when you're practicing music, you don't interrupt the continuity of that by stopping to, to scroll around on the screen. You have all your hands free and everything. Okay, so documents you should have out for today are uh, how to read ukulele chord diagrams, a rhythm chart, chords, uke, uh, knocking on heaven's door in C, knocking on heaven's door in G, and then our other charts um, that we have been working on from previous uh, lessons, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, Eau Claire de la Lune, and Drink to Me, okay, um, from lessons one and lessons two. And we're going to talk a little bit more about those rhythms and how to um, read, uh, understand, and practice rhythms. Okay, so first thing uh, is let's do a little bit of review about um, what you should be doing, reminders, and what you should be practicing. Okay, so the very first thing that you always should do is to tune your ukulele. Clip on electronic tuner is best. going a little sharp because of the air conditioning but um, that's the the thing you want to make sure is that you're in tune as well as you can possibly uh, tune it if your ukulele is newer you want to tune it much more often okay uh, never play it out of tune especially if you're um, doing a lesson or recording assignments because then um, you won't be in tune with me or with the example recordings and uh, especially when we start playing the chords, it will be even easier to tell when it doesn't sound so great, okay? Um, so being in tune greatly improves kind of the experience of practicing because you're the one that has to listen to yourself play. Um, I have to listen sometimes, but not as much as you, okay? Um, so tune it. And then let's talk about how to hold it, all right? Because, you know, you took a lesson, you had some assignments, you got some feedback, uh, but, you know, as you practice, you may start to forget some of these things, all right? So put the uke on your leg like this. I'm using a footstool to kind of elevate my leg a little bit. That helps me um, get my instrument like in a good position in a better position so my back can be a little bit straighter um, and it's just good it's good especially for beginners to elevate the instrument and get it in a good place to play it all right you reach over here and hold on to this part of the ukulele so if I'm doing my thumb G C E A great chefs eat a lot thumb is in a position that's in front of the sound hole but not out over here um, beyond where the body of the ukulele ends so this is the sweet spot if I draw a circle around here between this hole and the end of the ukulele body that's where you want to play it and then when we start strumming you're going to be strumming in the same place you never want to take your arm off the ukulele like this. You always want to be holding on to it like so, okay? And with your left hand, you want to stay balanced like this um, and keep your thumb up here. And what you don't want to be is down here. A lot of students want to be down here, and that's not a good place to be. You want to be up here. Uh, and grip the neck very closely. You can slide this kind of back and forth to kind of get in the best position, like when you play, you know, on the first fret, when you play on the second fret, 
the third fret or the fourth fret, your finger is like nicely arched like this. You don't want to play notes flat like this, and you never want your finger to do this, okay? So it's always arched with a very close grip like this, fret one, fret two, fret three, fret four. You can try that on a variety of strings. That's why that warm up exercise is a good one to do because you get to play on all four frets and that kind of gets you in the right place because everybody's hand is a little bit different. The length of your fingers will be different from other, another person's. So the exact place where you do this is flexible, but what there should not be like a big space in here, right, between the neck and your hand. It should be closed like this. So when you, you get feedback from me and it says close your left hand grip around the ukulele neck, then you'll know what I'm talking about like that, okay? And it's even more important for the chords because that's when we have to start pressing multiple notes down and holding them down and it's even more important that your fingers arch this way okay so that's why no matter what you're doing whether it's a scale or a little tab single note melody song your your hand your hand is always very close like this with the thumb up here all right so once you're in tune you're holding the ukulele right it should be at a 45 degree angle right not down here and not up here close to your face but right in between Okay, so that's that. Then what you should do is play that C major scale, position one, and you want to try and memorize that. So I'm not looking at any music, and I'm just trying to remember the notes. Just take a look real quick. Is my right hand in the right place? Is my left hand in the right place? Do I have a close grip around the ukulele neck? And then finally, there should be a space between the ukulele neck and here, okay? It can be like very close, okay? But you should just never touch this all the way. This is bad, okay? So always, if you look down and you see this, push it out and make a space, okay? So C major scale, position one. That's always the first thing that you should do. And do it a few times. And the quicker and smoother that you can do that, the better. That's why you don't want to just do it once or twice. You want to practice it and practice it until you don't have to think about it hardly at all. Okay. Then the next thing you want to do is practice those uh, two or three songs. You know, if you can um, play along with the example recording and confidently and well, you, you know, you don't have to practice that uh, again and keep doing it. You can move on and to doing something else. Okay, so let's let's play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and. Let's talk about the rhythms, okay? So, let's see. There we go. Okay. So, uh, we don't have to play the whole thing. Let's just play that first line, okay? One, two, three, four. So you'll notice that there were two notes in there that were longer than the other ones, and those were this one here and this one here. Okay, and you'll if you look up here, you'll see that those notes look different than the other ones. This is a white note 
like a white note head with a stem and these are black note heads with stems and uh, this one is called a half note and that gets two beats and this one is a quarter note and that gets one beat which what that means is that this one is twice as long okay so um, really the most important thing for you to think of right now is that that's a longer note so that when we get to one of those you have to wait so you're going along wait and wait okay so let's take a look at our rhythm charts rhythm charts so what I was just talking about quarter note half note one beat, two beats. So here's the quarter note, the black note head with the stem. It's called a quarter note and it gets one beat. So really the name is not quite as important as how many beats you give each one. The half note has a white note head and a stem. That one gets two beats. All right. Uh, it's called a half note because it takes up half the measure when we're playing uh, in uh, the time signature of 4-4 four, four, or common time, which has four beats in each measure. The half note will take up half the measure. The quarter note will take up one quarter of the measure. Or one quarter. Okay, so the phone is a really, really useful tool. Um, you know, you might have discovered that you can tune your instrument with your phone. There's tuning apps. Uh, the clip-on tuner is probably the best thing um, just because uh, noise and noisy environments don't interfere with it when you're trying to tune. Uh, but also there are apps called metronome apps, which is how we measure a beat. Okay, the one I recommend is called Speak Beat. Okay, Speak Beat. And this is a really good one. It has two modes. And the first mode is um, Tick, which gives us a beat. I can slow that down. So when we start using a metronome, we want to start at something pretty slow. This is at 60 beats per minute. So the way they measure this is the same way they measure your heartbeat, which is BPM, beats per minute. Okay, but then it has another feature, this one, speak beat, which is why this one is so special. It counts for you one, like this. Two, three, four, one, okay. two. Three. So let's start with the tick and let's slow it on down to 50. Okay, this is a good place to start. All right. So a quarter note is one beat, which means it gets one click of the metronome and we have to play one every time that thing clicks. All right. So let's go back to Twinkle and then. So here's our quarter notes, and then when we get to this one, it's going to be two clicks of the metronome. The half note is two clicks of the metronome. Ready? Okay, so it's a simple concept, but it's much more difficult in practice, okay? So because last week we just learned how to read, well, I guess the past couple weeks we've been learning how to read the tabs to find out where the note is, okay? But now what we want to do is we want to set that to a beat, all right? And the metronome is one way to do that. Okay, if that's too fast for you, you can slow it on down.
to 40. Let's try 40. One, two, three, four. And so on okay so that's the metronome uh, and it, it's this is kind of part of the process is that first you want to play through this a few times and try and get familiar with the notes and uh, but then at a certain point you want to set this to a beat to give yourself that challenge of playing the notes uh, without taking as much time in between each one as you like okay because um, you know if you don't have much music training sometimes there's a lot of guessing you know like hmm, I think this is what I'm supposed to do I think this is what it's supposed to sound like um, but you know learning about these rhythms and uh, about how to measure that out with the metronome gives you the confidence to really know that what you're doing is right okay um, so there's the metronome which I just showed you you can slow it down even more if you get slower than 40 it becomes kind of there becomes a little bit too much time in between each beat um, so I wouldn't go any slower than than 40 uh, okay and the other way to practice that is with the example recording so and a good thing to do is to listen to that in the first place and watch it because that also reminds you kind of how to hold the ukulele and you can play with me and uh, you can try and do everything as much as you possibly can the way I'm doing it in the video which is you know I'm sitting on a chair on a firm surface not a bed or the floor or the couch um, and I'm holding it the way I showed you at the beginning of the lesson and with the left hand and which fingers I'm using and and everything and you should try to do it that way this is sort of a, gives you a, a, an example and a model to kind of follow for each assignment and each uh, lesson item that we do okay so you can do the same thing with the video you you slow it down there's a tutorial about how to slow things playback speed 75 percent 50 percent this is really what you want custom and we can slow that on down not too much now let's try this so I'm gonna press play and then I'm gonna look at my uh, music and this is another good reason why you should have them printed so that you can like have your video on one screen and then have your music out in front of you on another it's very different unless you have like multiple screens um, it's that would be very difficult to do otherwise one, two, three, four. Oh, wait, let me uh, pull the music up, sorry. One, two, three, four. So this is a good way for you to sort of finally check to make sure that you're doing everything right is to play along with the example recording and I, I, I can't stress how important that is that you do that before you record your assignments and submit them because it will let you know if anything is, is not quite right. All right, And that can serve as kind of a final check. All right, So Eau Claire de la Lune. The only difference here is, rhythm-wise, um, is that it has another rhythm which is called a whole note. And that is like, it looks kind of like a half note except it has no stem and you can see it takes up the whole measure. 
Okay, so you see each of these measures in common time or 4-4. Four, four. There's two ways you can write that out is with the C or 4-4. Four, four. It means there's four beats in each measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So every measure has to add up to four. Okay, so four quarter notes or two half notes or one whole note. And if you look at your rhythm chart, okay, one thing I tell students sometimes, uh, the beginners, is that this music, learning to read music and learning about music in the beginning is kind of a, ma it's like a matching game. Okay, it's not, it takes the guesswork out of it. It's not a guessing game, it's like a matching game. So when you see, you know, the tab, you know, it means a certain thing. You have to match what you see on the tab to your instrument and what it's telling you to do. If you see the rhythm, you look it up on the rhythm chart. Uh, this is a quarter note, this is a half note, this is a whole note, and this is how much it gets. Okay, the study materials tell you basically everything that you need to know at this point. Okay, of course there's uh, an infinite amount that you can learn about music later on and the layers of complexity. But right now, it's just kind of a matching game, right? Oh, it says this, and this is how, you know, this is how he showed me how to hold it, and I'm gonna do this, okay? And that takes a lot of the, the guesswork out of it, and you just have to kind of trust me a little bit that I have my reasons for why I would do things a certain way and not another way, okay? Especially if you have some experience and you've learned how to do things one way, and now you're being asked to do things another way, please, you know, try it, you know, give me, give me a chance um, to show you the results that you can get. So the whole note, four beats, okay? So at this point, the rhythms are pretty simple. These are all kind of like children's songs or simple songs with simple rhythms. And that's where we kind of want to start, all right? So let's try this at 40 beats per minute. Two, three, four. Okay, so you'll notice that one got four beats. And the way you count these longer notes is I like to play the note and then count from the beat that comes after. So like this, two, three, four. Because if you, you know, if you play it, one, two, then you've added an extra beat and it's hard to kind of count at the same time. So what I like to do is I count the space between one note to the next. Two, three, four. Okay, so. Those are simple rhythms. And then after you've done that, you can try with the example recording, all right? If you can't keep up with that yet, don't worry, okay? I'm not exactly expecting you to keep up with everything at this point, but what I'm trying to do is show you a process that you can follow, okay? You practice the song, get familiar, get it to sound like reasonably like the example recording, maybe a little bit slower, and then try playing along with the metronome at 40 beats or 50 beats, something nice and slow, easy, gives you enough time to get from note to note, but pushes you to play, you know, on a, on a timeline, on a timetable. And then at the, the last thing is play along with the recording. And if you can play along with that at normal speed, reasonably well, 
then basically you're done with that song and you can move on to the next song, right? Because we, we use these songs kind of one after another to, as a stepping stone to the, next, to the next level, okay? Eau Claire de la Lune. Um, and then you play along with the recording. One, two, three. This is normal speed. Four. slow it way down That's really slow. That's even slower than 40 beats per minute on the metronome. So, you know, you can slow it down to the point where you can keep up. And it's important to do that because at that point, you're practicing the rhythms and you're learning the rhythms, which is what we want. That's, that's totally what we want. Okay, last one before we start learning about chords is Drink to Me. And that one is mostly quarter notes and half notes, just like uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and Eau Claire de la Lune, okay, except it has one more rhythm, which is this one, which is a half note, and it has a dot on it, okay, which is called a dotted half note. So it's a half note, and then it has a dot next to it, and that is three beats, okay? Because in Drink to Me, we don't have four beats in each measure. We only have three. So the time signature here has changed from common time or 4-4 four, four, to 3-4 time, which means there's only three beats in each measure. Okay, But it's still called a quarter note. We don't call it a third note or something like that because, you know, most things are in 4-4, four, four. that's why it's called common time. So you can't put a half, a, a whole note here because a whole note is four beats and that's too many beats. You can't have more than three uh, in, in one of these measures. So uh, the dotted half note in this case fills the entire measure. And also we can tie one note to another note. I think we talked about this in the last lesson and that just creates one big long note you don't play this one uh, but when the note is tied to a note that goes into the next measure which is what you have to do if you if you have to play a note that lasts for longer than one measure um, then you show the number in parentheses here to show that it's held over from the previous measure so this is one, two, three, and this is one, two, three, so six in total, and you count it like this. You play the note, two, three, one, two, three, and then the next one. Okay, so let's try this one with the metronome at 40. And let's see, let me change this to three, four, two, three. Okay, see how that works? Uh, let's try that with the voice, okay? Ready? One, One two, two, three. three.
and so on. Okay, the rhythms don't really change very much uh, throughout that song. So if you can play those first couple measures, you can pretty much play the whole song. And like I said before, if you can't keep up with that yet, don't worry about it. You know, go on our YouTube channel and like go back to this point in the lesson and uh, slow it down. Then you can slow it down with the playback speed controller. You can use the example recording. Okay. And drink to me example video. One. Two, three, this is full speed. So that's a good process to follow to learn about rhythms. Rhythm is the most difficult aspect of music. It's what makes music uh, difficult. Okay, and the heart of the rhythm, the heart of the song, etc. Um, and that speak beat is a good one. There's other metronomes. I, I like this one because it's like it it makes it look like an, an old timey metronome. Like this is what metronomes used to be like is, you know, uh, a clock pendulum type of thing. And you, sp you speed it up and slow it down by moving this little dial. Yeah. Okay. That one's kind of fun, but speak beat is, I like it a little bit better. It's a little louder for one thing. Okay. And it has, the option to One, use the voice, okay, two. which is helpful, especially for beginners. Okay, now there's another, uh, like a game you can also play, uh, which is a good one. It's called Rhythm Cat. So if you download Rhythm Cat, you can play this game that tests your knowledge of rhythms. And it's good to do this um, because it's good to practice rhythms just with like clapping or tapping uh, or playing a game like this and you get this like uh, this game here Let's see hopefully it'll load let me press play and then uh, let's see let's try level three let me press play let's try that again I missed the count off. So here's how it works. Okay. Press play. Counts it off, and then you have to play the rhythms by tapping this thing. Oh, three stars, okay. <laughs> you would think so that I could do that. If I failed that, that would be really embarrassing. Um, so, on this one, when you tap that thing, you, 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 if you're doing a, whole, uh, a half note or something, you have to like tap it and hold it for two beats. So it's like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So however long that note lasts, you have to hold it, hold that button. Otherwise it'll show that it's wrong. Um, and this is a good one. This is Rhythm Cat 1. It should be free, but they do have one that you, you pay for. It has some different features. And I think they have another one called Rhythm Cat 2. Um, and as you go through the levels, the rhythms get more and more challenging, but it's, it's a game uh, that helps improve your understanding of those rhythm symbols, okay? So those are the two apps I recommend. Anyway, Speak Beat 
and rhythm cat for doing rhythms. Okay, so that's it for the, uh, the songs that we already did. We just talked about the rhythm in depth as opposed to just the tabs that we learned how to do before. And now you have this. And about that dotted half note in Drink to Me, it has a note down here about the dotted rhythms. Uh, a dot added to a note adds half the value to the, the duration of the note, which is, so you can add a dot to any type of rhythm and it always adds on half the value. So half of two is one and two plus one is three. A dotted quarter note is one and a half because one uh, divided by two is half and one plus a half is one and a half and so on. An eighth note is half plus half of half is one fourth. So one half plus one fourth is three fourths um, and so on. Um, and today we're going to learn basically five different kinds of rhythms. We've done quarter note, half note, dotted half note, and whole note, which takes care of the values one, two, three, and four. And then the other one we're going to learn when we do the, uh, the chord song is the eighth notes. All right. So chords... Let's get out this document. How to read ukulele chord diagrams. Okay, uh, let's make that a little smaller. It's either that or that. Huh? Okay, so the chord diagrams are like you're looking at your ukulele like this. Okay, so it's like it's hanging on the wall in front of you. So this line is the G string, okay, it tells you vertical lines are strings, vertical lines G, C, E, A equals uke strings, so G for this line, C for this line, E for this line, and A for this line. These horizontal boxes are the frets, so fret one, fret two, fret three, and fret four. So on these, the, the dots will go like in the boxes and not on the lines here because that's like where we put our fingers, right? So this means A string, fret one, two, three, one, two, three. And then the number inside this circle, the number three, it doesn't mean fret three in this case, it means finger number three. Okay, and we always count the fingers like this. This is finger one, finger two, finger three, and finger four. Okay, and there's only four fingers. The thumb doesn't count as one of them. It's the letter T for thumb, if the thumb is ever used, which on ukulele it usually isn't. So that's our C chord. So we place the third finger, which is the ring finger, on the A string on the third fret. Okay, we always want to grip the neck very close like that. Arch the finger, okay? So your finger should always look like this, right? And as they straighten out, that's bad. And then your finger should never do this, okay? So don't let it bend the other way, okay? Always arch the finger, get it in the middle of the fret, right there in the middle. You don't want it back here or the note will sound like this. Okay, it sounds good in the middle. All right, and when I'm strumming the ukulele, I'm not holding it up here anymore. Okay, so it's even more important that it balances here. And then when I let go, the, the uke doesn't move anywhere. Okay, all right, and just watch out that your fingers don't, don't do something like this, okay? They're always arched. You're pressing down with the tip of your finger, okay? Just 
like so. Okay. All right, which is why it's so important that you cut your fingernails very short because if there's any little bit of fingernail, it will get in the way of you arching your finger and playing up on the tip of your finger and your finger will look more like this. You'll want to play your ukulele down in this position more to accommodate that angle of your finger, which is not a good angle. It's, it's doing that because you have a long fingernail and uh, it's not good and your chord is not gonna sound good, okay? So it has to be like this, yeah, okay? And then you play all four strings like this. All right, and the thumb is a good way to do down strums like that. Down, 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 all right? Down, down, down. Let me show you another way to strum, okay? It's like this with the finger, all right? So you do this, you separate your thumb and your finger. You basically never want to touch those two fingers together when you're strumming, okay? I do this to show people like that I'm only strumming with this one finger, okay? For the down, you drag your fingernail across the string like you're flicking it. Okay, it's not with the side of your finger or the side of your finger like this. It's not with multiple fingers. It's just this one finger like that, okay? And you can also do it with your fingers relaxed like this. But I do this just to show people that it's just one finger. So down with the fingernail and then what you want to do is like point at the floor. And the reason you want to do that is because you want to move your finger when you're strumming. This is like the way not to strum, to like hold your finger in one place like that. You want to move it, it you want to move it like this, all right? If you watch ukulele videos, um, you'll, you know, it's hard to see, right? Because the hand is. It's hard to see, right? It looks like maybe they're using more than just that finger, but they're not. It's just this one finger doing all the work and making the contact with the strings, okay? Later on, we'll learn how to do some, some tricky things that involve maybe, you know, not just that one finger. But for now, that's what you want to learn how to do, is just strumming with either the thumb coming down. Right now, as far as you're concerned, the thumb doesn't do any kind of up strum. The up strums are with the index finger, right? So when it comes down, it points at the floor, and you follow through with it like that. Down and up, down and up. Don't try to get like too tricky or too complicated with the strumming. Okay, right now we just want to learn how to do the basic strum. Okay, and you'd think that would be a simple thing, but you know when I watch people's assignments, they're doing all sorts of weird things like um, using you know, all four fingers like this, or strumming up and down with their thumb, or strumming with the side of their finger like this, or like holding their finger straight and strumming. Okay, that's why I'm trying to do this. And then just never hold, touch your thumb to your finger, because you know, that's a bad thing too, is holding on to the finger with the thumb, right? It, it wants to move around and have that mobility. Okay, so let's learn some other chords. Let's do A minor. This is the chord chart. You can buy this at the music store, but this one is a special one because I've gone through it and I've photoshopped all of the mistakes. Uh, maybe not all of them. I, I may still find some new mistakes somewhere, but yeah, I just photoshopped and moved the little 
black circles around um, so that I get the chords exactly the way that I want them and the way I want the students to learn them. Okay, so C is down here, they go alphabetical. Okay, A, B flat, and then they have this note A sharp, same as B flat. So you could call this B flat or you could call it A sharp. Either way, we'll learn more about that when we learn how to read the notes about sharps and flats and things like that. Um, let's do A minor. The little M stands for minor. So the way you say these is A, and that's an A major chord. You don't have to say A major because when you say just A, that means that it's major, okay? So A, which is major, but you don't have to say it. It's just A. And then A7, and then A minor. And we do have to say minor so that it's differentiated from major. And the little m stands for minor. So A minor, A minor 7. This is A diminished 7th, and A augmented. And we don't, we don't have to worry about diminished and augmented or minor 7 just yet. We're just doing simple major and minor. So A minor, if you zoom in, we have a number two, that means the middle finger, and it goes on the second fret. This is the first fret and the second fret here, and it's on the, the G string. Okay, this chart also shows you the orientation of the chord diagrams, the G string, the C string, the E string, and the A string. So it reminds you but you also have that document, how to read ukulele chord diagrams, okay? So A minor. All right, now what you wanna do, now remember, okay? Close grip, always up close here. Nice arched finger, thumb is up here. Okay, you don't wanna be down here with the thumb down here or out here or like this. I see people doing this sometimes. That's not good. It should always be up here, nice close grip, and a space between here and the ukulele neck. Yeah, okay, not like this. You see, this is bad. All right, and then you want to check it to see if you're doing it right. And the way you do that is you play each string one by one like this. And that's what you want to hear and then all together. A nice clear tone on each string and then all together. And what we're looking for there when we do that is we're looking for notes that sound like this or notes, buzzy notes, muted notes, dampened notes. adjustments basically what's happening there okay the note buzzes if it's like on the wrong place on the fret so you want to get that in the middle to get that nice clear tone okay or it buzzes because I'm touching it here with my middle finger or it can be muted like that that's why you see the difference between the finger being arched and the finger being just a little bit at a different angle and now you can't get that note right so usually the the solution to that is to push the finger up this way more and get it so that it's not touching the string underneath okay or i could also be touching it here with this um with this part of my hand right and then that will also mute the a string to get that in a spot where I'm not touching that string either okay so that's pretty easy C okay here's our C chord and a minor pretty easy when you only have
have to hold down one note. Okay, now hold A minor, because our next chord is similar to A minor. It has this note in the same position, the G string second fret. But then I also have to add the E string first fret and hold down both of the notes like this, okay? So, all right, now that's a little trickier, okay? So, you know, like I said, close grip, arch your fingers, try not to touch other strings that you're not supposed to touch, okay? Make sure you're pressing in a good place on the fret, not too far back. You can be in the middle or all the way up till you're almost touching the, the fret. And that's what it should sound like. Nice clear tones on each string. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that it doesn't have to be perfect right away. If you can't quite, you know, if there's a note that's being muted and you can't quite get it, don't worry about it. Just move on to another chord and come back to it later. Okay, these things will get better as you practice them and you get better at, you know, just getting your fingers to do what uh, you want them to do. Sometimes they won't do that. And so, you know, take your other hand and reach over and, you know, kind of like put them where you want them. You know, stay relaxed. You know, don't like, you know, get like a, like an iron grip going on. You know, it doesn't take too much pressure. It's more about just getting your finger like right in the right place. Okay, but if it sounds like this, okay, if that's the best you can do at that particular time, don't worry, it will get better the more you practice. Okay, so F. Hold F. The next chord we're doing is a lot like F. It's called D minor. And all we do, we hold these notes in the same position as F, and then we have another note that we're going to add, and that is with the third finger, and we put it on the C string on the second fret. So you'll see both fingers are on the second fret. Okay, squish them together with that hand. And they just have to kind of squish in there. And don't be uh, confused here because the number three here means the third finger, but it's going on the second fret, the same fret that your middle finger is on, and not over here on the third fret, okay? D minor. In some ways, it's easier because when we play F, we have to avoid the open string here. And that's a little bit harder than when the note is pressed down. If I can get my finger in the right spot, squish the fingers together and check it. Okay. And it will take some time in order to, to master that. You know, don't think like, well, I didn't I, I couldn't get it during the lesson, so it's never gonna happen. You know, don't worry about it. Uh, just practice daily and measure your results, you know, in like days and weeks of practice, not in, you know, minutes. Okay, and we're going to do only one more chord. Oh, there might, actually there might be one more before the end of the lesson, but right now just one more, which is G. Okay, so the first finger goes on the C string on the second fret. The second finger goes on the A string, also on the second fret, okay? So this is a good example of why we don't want our hand in this position, because it's very hard to do that, right? You see over here, my, my fingers are in the right, going at the right angle to be on, on the same fret like that. And then finally, the ring finger goes on the E string on the third fret. Now, this is the thing that people are going to have trouble with, which is that ring finger. That's one of our clumsy fingers. Like the first finger and the second finger are pretty, you know, strong fingers. They're pretty agile. We're used to using those in sort of everyday tasks. 
But the thing we're not used to doing unless we've had music training is using this ring finger or this pinky finger, okay? So just make sure you arch the fingers nice and arched. Make sure they're on the string and pressing down on a good part of the fret. All right. And on this one, it's going to be this note that's going to be the one that's, that's kind of hard to get. Um, so watch out because like sometimes when you when you put your fingers on at this angle and then you arch them up What will happen is like this finger will just come off the string. So you just have to reposition it To make sure it's pressing down on that string And that's G Okay, and make sure you follow the fingerings the way they're that they show on this chart, you know, don't try any like unusual alternate fingerings okay of course you can do that after the class is over but for the purposes of this class I want everyone to play the chords the way that they're shown on this chord chart and the way they're shown in the lesson videos and in the example videos okay you can experiment with alternate fingerings for stuff later try it my way first and I think um, if you really do that and give it a chance you'll, you'll get some good results okay I've been doing this for a little while now and I have a you know I'm not foolproof or you know perfect by any means um, but I kind of know a thing or two about what works and some things that don't work very well, okay? And that's all. So, C, A minor, F, which is just one more finger than A minor, D minor is one more finger than F, and G. Okay, and again, this is a thing that's going to be slow at first, and you know, like I said, the first thing is to try and remember the chord when you see the chord symbol so that you don't have to look at the chord chart every time you see the chord symbol for G or C um, and check it and try and get it to sound good. That's step one. All right, we can worry about other steps later on. Now, let's learn a song because the best way to practice these things is by playing a song. It's hard to learn, you know, learning chords by looking at the chord chart is kind of like trying to learn a language by studying the dictionary. It doesn't work so great and it's kind of like information overload so what we like to do is we learn a few words or a few chords and then we practice using those um, a whole bunch a lot with a lot of repetition okay so C hopefully you remember that one because it's just one note to remember A3 with the third finger and that's it now we are going to do this strum pattern so on C and for the down strum we're gonna do like what I showed you with the finger down and up like that down with the finger and up just remember keep the thumb and the finger separate point at the floor flick your fingernail across the string like that your fingernail should be the only thing making contact with the string and you shouldn't be hitting your instrument when you do that you know dragging your instrument across wood you should only be feeling string and not very much of the wood or the metal part and that's also going to hurt your finger if you do that uh, very often okay and that's one other thing is that with the daily practice and getting the tougher skin on the tips of your fingers, the calluses developing, um, that's going to make it easier to play these chords, okay? Because 
when you first start out, you have this sort of soft, pillowy thing here, and it kind of spreads out when you press down on the notes. And then later they turn more into kind of like hard points. And then that makes it easier to press and get the chord to sound right. That's why I say, you know, don't get frustrated like if your chord sounds like this. And if that's the best your chord and you can't quite get it to sound like that, don't worry, it'll get better later as your fingers toughen up. So C. Okay, and this means down, okay? This symbol right here means down. And this V-shaped symbol here, that means up. Down and up, okay? These are the best kinds of symbols to use uh, in the, you know, the digital age with the internet. You'll see people trying to um, do all kinds of different things. They're using like arrows and using letters for D and U for down and up. Um, but there's some issues with those types of things that I don't like. And uh, this is the best because there's never any confusion about what that means okay this always means down and this always means up and there's never any room for interpretation or confusion there okay so we got the half note so it's like this one two three just like we do on all those other songs twinkle twinkle little star eau claire de la lune and drink to me we count the same way one two three metronome out again is a good time to do it one two I'm gonna switch back to four four because it's counting three now four four two three four two last time you do an up and this is where we learn about the eighth notes so if you look at the rhythm chart we have this down here and these are eighth notes and those are half a beat so those are two per beat so the quarter note you play on every beat down, down, down. and eighth notes is it's just the beats like one two three and four we come down and if it's on the end of the beat we come up so one and two and three and four and so when it's and we play that with an up when it's one two three or four it's down okay and yeah it just it shows two different ways you'll see the note. You'll see them beam together when they're in pairs or in groups, and when they're by themselves, they have a little flag. Quarter notes, half notes, and whole notes cannot be beamed to anything. Only eighth note and smaller uh, can be beamed. Okay. Let's do our next chord now, G. So here's G again, and yeah, like I said before, it's a matching game, so you match the chord symbol to this, and after a while, hopefully you'll remember the chord and not have to keep going back to, uh, to the, the chord chart every single time. Okay, that's why um, it's good. <clears throat> to do a song like this, because it does not show you the, the diagram of the chord on this chart. It just shows you the chord symbol, which is what you'll usually see, and it usually will not show you the diagram. Okay, so G, get that set up. All right, C2, A2, and E3, like this, check it. 
a minute. Okay, I have one, two, let's play our strum pattern. Four, one, two, three, four, and. Let's do that again, ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and. Okay, and then we're gonna do D minor is next. So go back to our chord chart. D minor is like F. So if you remember F, then you do this, and then one more finger. So E1, G2, and C3. Okay. If you need more time to set that up, this is a good time to just press pause on the video. You can always press pause and, you know, take as much time as you need to figure that out. Okay. Um, D minor. So we're going to do two measures here. Ready? One, two. So when you come up, just go right back down. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and. Let's do that again, okay? So, because we have two measures, we have to do it twice. Ready? Two, three, four. One, two, Okay. I like this strum pattern. There's a reason why I teach this one first because what we're trying to learn about here is half notes and quarter notes. And then we also introduce the concept of the eighth note, um, which is good for strumming because strum patterns, you know, that just go down, down, down are pretty boring. We want to spite, we want to make it a little bit more rhythmic than the children's songs um, to make it interesting. Okay, so this is a good variety. You have a long note, one, two, three, four, and, all right? C is the next chord. Okay, if you need to look at your chord chart, pause the video, go look up the C chord and get that set up. Okay, but now we're gonna just kind of move on. So if you look, there's some notes here. All right. So let's talk about the first one. This is a strum pattern that is the same on every measure. You may have already noticed that. This is the best way to get started. We can make it more complicated later on. So we wanna just learn this strum pattern and repeat it and do the same thing on every single measure. Even though, you know, if you were to perform this song, in a performance or recording that's the thing you wouldn't want to do because that's a little bit too boring to just play the same thing every single time uh, you'd want to vary the rhythm and the strumming but we don't want to think about that too much right now because we're just learning how to play the chords how to remember where to put our fingers the hand position for how to hold it um, the strumming technique and how to play rhythms, all right? And um, we don't want to complicate things too much, all right? Even though what I just said is a lot of things, right? But again, you know, this is week three, so we kind of like learn one thing and then another, but as we go, you're expected to kind of remember more and more and more things, and uh, you, you can only do that by practicing like daily and trying to remember these things, okay? So uh, we can make the strum, we can make the strumming like a lot more. So we can do all kinds of things with this, but right now we're just learning it. So just do the same thing on every measure, 
try not to get too creative, all right, with the strumming. I want you to learn the strum pattern. And, you know, if I watch the video and I see somebody doing something other than this, then I go, hmm, do, do they know the strum pattern or not? I'm not sure. Okay, so that's why, you know, let's do this, and then later we can start combining more different kinds of rhythms together. Okay, so the other thing, let's not worry about this one right now. Let's do the third one is try doing a fake down strum on beat two to keep better time by keeping the right hand in motion constantly and steadily, okay? So the fake strum is like this. You just do a strum, but you don't hit anything, okay? And you do it on beat two, which is the thing that you're counting in between the time you do this strum and this strum. So it's like this. And that's a good way to count it, actually, without actually having to go one, two, three, four, and as I count the beats by moving my hand in a kind of a constant, steady way, without ever having to, like, you know, stop here or here, or uh, do any kind of, like, sudden, jerky type movement with my right hand, which is kind of the whole idea between, behind what is down and what is up is that it falls in sort of the natural motion of your hand when you keep it moving constantly and steadily like this one two three four and one two three four and let's say you have had like a lot of music training and you don't need the fake strum to be able to play this rhythm. But do it anyway, because it's a good technique to learn and it becomes even more useful later on when the rhythm becomes more and more complicated. So doing the fake strum is a really useful tool in playing rhythms uh, consistently well. All right, so the fake strum, okay. Now, I have the counting written out here, okay. This is how you diagram a rhythm, is the half note is two beats, so we write one, two, and then this comes on three. The quarter note is only one beat, so the next thing comes on four. So one, two, three, four. Except we need one more thing now because we're dealing with eighth notes, and eighth notes are two per beat, so now we need and to count. So we put and, and this is how we count. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And I like to use the plus sign for the word and. Not the ampersand because it's just too fancy. It doesn't look good. I like this one and two and three and four and and the number or the and goes directly underneath the note head so that you know exactly when to play these notes so one right it's all here the note the duration the direction down two and three and four and, okay? And this is where the speak beat really comes in handy because I can switch over to the voice part. One, and, two. And I can change it to eighth notes. If I go into settings, it has a quarter note and an eighth note. And when I switch it to the eighth note, it counts like this. One. Two and, and three. 
three and four and one and two and three and four and let's do G. And two. Okay. G. And ready and one and two and three and four and one. Let's do F. F is two times. So there's one more thing to talk about and you know yes it will take you some time at first to get from C to G and G to D minor okay um, you can still use the metronome um, with either the tick or the counting um, the counting is particularly good in this because you have it diagrammed out here and then it's t it's counting you and in a way it's teaching you how to count. I can do it myself. One and two and three and four and... That's a good skill to have too, is to be able to count and play at the same time. If you try that, then do it very slowly. One and two and three and four forget how I told you to strum okay look at your strumming make sure you're coming across with the fingernail you're not holding on to the finger with the thumb you're not strumming with other fingers or doing anything weird like strumming with the side of your finger or like this or holding the finger in place and doing that okay <laughs> gotta get the technique all right there's one more thing to talk about when switching chords, play the last eighth note before the switch on the open strings. In other words, take your fingers off the strings before playing that note. Okay, what that means is very simply, before I play this note, the up, I'm going to take my fingers off the strings and do the up strum like that just on the open strings. Okay, and this has to do with how we make the switch, all right, which is like this. Two and three and four off. One and two and three and four off. One and... And eventually, you know, with some time and practice, you'll be able to make the switch in that space that's created by playing the open strings. So again, you play this on the chord, but then before you do this up strum, you take your finger off the strings, or your fingers off the strings, depending on which chord you're playing. Okay, so C, one, and fake, and three, and four, off. Let's do that even slower. One, and fake, and And G okay pause the video look up the chord get it set up and then press play ready and one and fake and three and four off and then D minor okay now D minor what you don't want to do is you don't want to take your fingers off here because it's only when switching chords. So this one, we do not take our fingers off, but here we do because the next chord over here is C. So this is a switch, but this is not a switch. So this one goes like this. Ready, and one, and fake, and three, and four, and one, and fake, and three, and four, off. So you have to remember not to take your fingers off here and to do that twice. Okay, C, G, and then F. And then here, we're gonna take our fingers off too because F back to C counts as one of the switches, all right? This is a repeat sign. 
these two dots here means repeat. And when you encounter a right hand repeat sign, you go back to the left hand repeat sign. And this song actually is that this is the entire song. You just play this again and again and again and again for the whole song, which is why, you know, this is kind of a good one to start with. There's a lot of songs like that where they just repeat the same uh, thing again and again for the whole song. It makes the song simple and it allows for us to do it like a lot of times the same thing over and over and over again, which is what you want at this point, okay? So don't forget to take your fingers off here. Not here because I don't want to take them off and then put the, chord, the same chord back into place. That's counterproductive, all right? And then one more thing before you go is what I like to do for this song is I like to play it in two different keys. Um, you know, for a lot of these songs that are meant for guitar, um, the original key for guitar is like a little bit harder for ukulele. Um, so I put it in this key because these chords are a little bit easier, but the other key, this is the original key. So if you go and listen to the song, which I've included in your study materials, um, the original Bob Dylan song, it will be in this key. So G will be the first chord. And then we have to learn one more chord, which is D. And I like that because you get to learn uh, just maybe like one more chord than you normally would. All right. D is like this. Middle finger goes here on the G string on the second fret. And then the ring finger goes here on the C string on the second fret, just like D minor. Okay, and then the little finger goes here on the E string, also on the second fret. Okay, so you see they're all kind of like this, two, 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 all right? And you want to squish them together. It's kind of like, you know, one, they, the three fingers become like one finger and then put them in place like that. All right, now this chord, you still want to be have a close grip here, right? There shouldn't be any space between, you know, the neck and this part, okay? But on this chord, it's good to kind of bring your wrist out a little bit more, okay? In general, you don't want to bend the wrist too much. You want to keep it more straight. But on this chord, it's good because it changes that angle from like this to this and lets you kind of stack the fingers up, all right? The question I get is, why not this, right? I want to do it this way. Well, it's not as good because these fingers are bigger and they just don't fit as well in there, okay? Maybe yours do, but it's still not as good as this way because no matter what the size of your fingers are, these three fingers will be smaller and they'll always fit in there just a little bit better. And then your chord will sound good, you know, more consistently good. So that's why it's the second, third, and fourth finger. It gives you a chance to include this finger in your chord practice, which is good. And then everything works the same way with the fake strum and the open strings. Ready on G. Okay, if you need some time, pause the video, set your chord up, G, and one, fake, three, four, off, and then D. Okay, two, 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 with your middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. Ready, and one, two, That's just one finger on G2 like this. Okay, and remember, don't take your fingers off here, but do here. Let's do A minor twice, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, ready? One, fake, three, four, and one, fake, three, four, off. Okay, now eventually it will sound like this.
actual original Bob Dylan song is going to be a little bit faster than that. It's just the we we're going to do it a little slower, and um, the best thing for you to do is go really slow and give yourself the best chance to make that switch because the faster you do the strum the less time it gives you to make the switch so a good thing to do is just to go real slow and then you have a little bit more time to get from chord to chord original recording is more like this fun with that you know strumming is usually like the thing that most people want to learn you know that's what they think of when they think of you know playing the ukulele they don't think too much about you know like playing drink to me or the C major scale but it's it's good the tab will come in handy for some things that we'll do later on all right, it's good to do both. This kind of chart, it doesn't require a tab, okay, because it all we need is that chord symbol and the strum pattern, and that's all we need to, to uh, play a chord chart like this. Um, and it's good to be able to read both kinds of charts, just the chord symbol chart or the tab type chart. Um, and... Um, yeah, that's it for today. Uh, listen to those example recordings. Try um, using the speak beat metronome with the, uh, the tick and also the voice settings. Okay. And, uh, you know, don't forget, you know, if you go into settings and you click on the quarter note or the eighth note, it changes the way it counts from like one, two, three, four to one and two and three and four. Um, and then the other thing was the rhythm cat game. That's a good game to play just to kind of like study the concepts of playing rhythms with a beat um, without having to deal with all the things that you have to deal with when you're holding your instrument you know you can just practice the rhythm uh, by themselves okay and uh, that's it today I'll see you in the next lesson video mahalo